All right then, so we're doing pretty well. We've set up our Express application now, and the next thing we need to do is set up GraphQL to work with this application. Now to do that, we're gonna to have to install two packages. The first one is called GraphQL, so npm install GraphQL, and this is the main GraphQL package, which is a JavaScript implementation of GraphQL. And the other package we need to install is called express-graphql. And this is the package which helps our Express app interact and understand GraphQL because out of the box, Express doesn't understand GraphQL. So we're gonna install both of those now. And once they're installed, let's head back to app.js and we're gonna require the Express-GraphQL module inside this file. So we'll say const, and then this constant is gonna be called GraphQL, and then in capitals HTTP, and we'll set that equal to require, and then in brackets, express hyphen GraphQL. Now, this is one of those occasions where this variable over here, or this constant, the name of it doesn't equal the name of the package. Now, this is just kind of a convention for express GraphQL. So anyway, now we've imported that or required that inside that file, we can use it. So like I said, the Express GraphQL module allows Express to understand GraphQL and provides a simple way to create an Express server that runs the GraphQL API. But how do we do that? Well, the way we do it is we use it as middleware on a single route. And this route will be like an endpoint to interact with our GraphQL data. Remember in a previous tutorial how I said that when we use GraphQL, we have one supercharged endpoint to rule them all, that we send all GraphQL queries to. Well, that is what this endpoint is gonna be. So let's set up some middleware. The way we do that in Express is by saying our app.use, then the route that we're gonna use this middleware on, what's our GraphQL endpoint? Well, I'm gonna call this forward slash GraphQL. Then when someone goes to this route, Express is gonna look at it and say, okay, I know what you want. You want to interact with GraphQL. So because I don't understand GraphQL on my own, what I'm gonna do is hand off the control of this request to this thing right here, okay? Because that does know how to handle GraphQL requests. So I'm gonna pass that in right here, and it is in fact, a function. So this function is going to fire whenever a request to forward slash GraphQL comes in. And this function is going to handle that GraphQL request. That's what it's there to do. Now the function takes in some options inside an object. So let's create an empty object right here and we'll pass some options in later on. So what's going to happen now if we save this and run it and try to go to forward slash GraphQL. Well, let's have a look. First of all, let's go down to our console and try and run the file. So nodemon app. And then when we've run that, let's go over. And you can see if I go to forward slash GraphQL after localhost colon 4000, then I get this error object. And this error object is basically saying that the GraphQL middleware right here that we've used must contain a schema. So we have to pass through a schema into this middleware for it to work. And that schema is gonna tell Express GraphQL about our data and how our graph will look. So remember the diagram that I showed you a couple of tutorials back. And this is basically a graphical representation of our schema or a schema that we want to create. It says what data types are on the graph and how it's structured. We have the book data type and the author type and the different relationships between those. So it's saying how the graph can be walked between these different data types. Remember, the ultimate goal of creating our GraphQL server is to allow queries to jump into our graph at different points to retrieve data. So Express GraphQL, the package we just installed and used as middleware, needs to know how to handle that and it needs to know how our graph looks, the data types on it, the properties of those data types, the relationships between those. It needs to know all of this for it to work, and it needs to take in a schema which represents how our graph looks, okay? So we need a way to programmatically create this graph kind of schema to describe how our graph will look.
and then pass it into this function right here. So that Express GraphQL knows exactly how to deal with our data and queries. So in the next video, what we're going to do is start to create a schema so that we can pass it inside this middleware function right here.